because I hate writing. I'm going to be quite honest. I, if I was a better writer, I'd have a PhD. I would have stayed in school longer. <laughs> like, well, that's oh, okay. I if I had a better essay. singing voice, I'd be a famous singer. You know, yeah. we all kind of <laughs> make our tour. Our so, so like, <laughs> is there hacks? Is there programs? Is there apps? Is there something that I can do uh, if I record an, an audio podcast? And then maybe that'll be the next thing we'll talk about video versus audio. And then what you do after the fact to, to blog it out. How does that work? How do you do that? Well, you hear a lot about this out in the marketplace and to kind of break it down is when you create one piece of content, whether it's a podcast or a video or a written blog, you can without too much effort, I mean, everything does require some effort, obviously, move that into another platform. So once you do a podcast episode and you can hire people to do this, I hire uh, a editor who does the sound. And on one of the podcasts I do, we have a show notes editor. Well, actually I have people doing show notes for me on both of them. And we, and you can have them do pure transcript. You can have the show notes be bullet point, and then you can take those show notes and turn them into a blog. So if you're like Jamie and you don't like writing that transcript can go right into blog form, which then puts all your Google keywords on the written page, which are a little better to read than the listening and podcasting and blogging will be definitely separate like that. Well, now because of, we have all these great tools and zoom so we can do videos. Well, now we also, sorry, I'm kind of going into the next one, but then yeah. you can also do that with a video and yeah. take the sound yeah. off and create a podcast and create a blog. So they all do take work, but creating one piece of content, you can use it so many ways. So let's uh, give them a tool. Cause I, I use, Yes. I know many people use Zoom uh, to record their podcast because depending on, on your, your account, of course, but the higher level accounts, you have a separate files, right? You have a video file, you have an audio file, and then you could even have a transcript, which would be okay, let's, key, right? Wait, Go let's ahead. break that down for a minute because when you're recording a podcast on Zoom, yeah, right, if your goal is podcast – the best way to do it is to download it to your computer because that way you get the separate tracks. And if you're like me, I talk a little loud, I laugh a little loud. So I really need my editor to be able to moderate the sound and he needs yeah. two separate tracks to do that. I, and, and I think that's in your settings too in Zoom, whether you, if you haven't been in the settings, you can have separate audio tracks for each person. If somebody like, you know, has those peaks and, where it, 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 it making sure they have a good microphone and all that is important as well. But right. yeah. Um, I, I don't, don't think you can do that on online unless they've added it. When I first started, you could not record separate tracks if you saved it to the cloud. Do you know if they oh, changed that? Oh, could be that. Um, maybe that's the difference. But it's definitely a setting within Zoom. And I'll, right. I'll, I'll, I'll put the Zoom settings, my recommended Zoom settings in the comments. And then Monica also has a, a great checklist for you guys before the end of today's broadcast. But that I just want to reiterate that that's really important. Check your settings because the Zoom download doesn't have as many ways to save it. So it limits your reusability, but it does have the separate tracks and the online may have set, you know, they may have added the separate tracks, but when you save it to the cloud, again, according to what level you have, they do have many yeah. more ways to record it. So it's a thing. So what about, Hey, we got Lisa's watching. Um, Lincoln, Nebraska. Lincoln, 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 Nebraska. Uh, so Jeffrey Scott Sand says he uses Descript and Overdub. Um, I'm guessing that's for the audio, for the for the uh, the podcast. But let's let's distinguish because a lot of people do podcasts and really it's a video blog, video like what we're doing now, and they call it a podcast. They don't do anything with the audio. Maybe they plan to, but they never do. What if, if you know you're going to use it for the audio later, what are some things you have to be aware of when recording it that you can't ever do over, I guess? Okay, let me break it down a little bit yeah. because in my Center for Realtor Development podcast, that's only a podcast. We don't do the video. We don't share the video. We do record it because we're recording it on Zoom. So we have the recording and I use Zoom because it's just so easy and it's easy for my non-techie clients. Right. For your guests. Yeah, that's important. Right, for my guests to come on easily. Um, 
So all I care about is the audio, which is why I mentioned I download it to my computer. Now, in the other one that I'm doing with my husband, we yeah. want to have the video with that one. So my editor has taught me how to record it because we are saving it online because we need the better video that way. And because we're using a mixer, are we going down rabbit trails here? You see that there's some education. Yeah. So he and I, because we need to both use mics, we have a mixer. So we have two mics and it goes into one track in Zoom. And so he's taught us how to work with our mixer. But when we do that, I have to edit the video because when we're done, inevitably there's a little, you know, you got something you want to edit out. And so in the video, we just, I just cut out the part. There's a lot of things I don't worry about on video though, because when you see it, it's in context and it's funny or whatever, and you can leave it in the video. But in the audio, you have to Doesn't be a bit more technical when there's weird yeah. sounds. And so I hire the professionals to do all the audio editing for me. But the video, I just slap it up there as is and just cut out a piece that might be awkward. I don't over, I don't over analyze the video because people have a higher tolerance level for, okay, I'm going to say this Nonsense. phrase, no mediocre quality video. Okay. You know, if yeah, the yeah. video is not yeah. vid perfect, people will still go with it. They like it, but they don't like mediocre sound and they don't like mediocre photos. So when you're on Instagram and just using photos or you're doing podcasting, you need to make sure your quality is really tight. But when you're doing a video, people tend to have a little more grace because there's lots going on and they just like the video. And we're used to that. People just throwing it out there. Yeah. And uh, one of the things I noticed, Jeffrey Scott Stanton and I are working on one. It's called the Indubitably Podcast or, or Much to Say About Nothing. Cool. Uh, is as we, I and mean, we had to get used to this, you're on video and there's a, Right. There's body language that you then have to describe like, OK, Monica's hair is super curly right now. You guys can't see it. But and then, well, and right. then whatever, it's whatever, whatever we're going to talk about so that the people who are listening to it can also, you know, hear it described. Uh, verbally. Oh, right. You have to keep right. that in mind that you're talking not necessarily to two different audiences, but in two formats. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. yeah. Um, Margie had a question. She said, where can we find people to edit for us? And um J-Man's going to post the links. I have two handouts that are, they're hidden links on my website. So you need to get the links from him. And I guess he'll put them in the YouTube description later too. You can you uh, download those links there. And I have several people who can do that for you. A lot of vendors. One is a checklist and one is a vendor list. Wow, that is helpful. There's one. Yep. That looks like a checklist, right? And then the yep. second one. Well, and if you're if you're serious about starting to do podcasting, you can join on Facebook. If you're on Facebook, you can join the Podcast Movement Facebook page. And it is the one I connect with. There's other conferences and other groups I put on the handout. However, I've been going to podcast movement on and off for six or seven years, and it's amazing. It's probably the largest one, <clears throat> and it was so convenient. It was in Nashville last year, so oh, I ran so up there to go connect the with people. <laughs> yep, just right down the street. Was it Opryland? I was at Opryland, yep. Oh, I love fun. that place. It's one of the, my favorite places I've been. Yeah, it's a great place. So uh, I can't remember where it is this year, but there's a big Facebook page there, and you can join that group and go do some research in there. And the other place I network with for podcasting, and you can maybe find this in meetup groups or, you know, just kind of start Googling it, asking around. We have a Nashville podcasters group and it meets in person sometimes as well as online on a Facebook page. And I like networking with them as well and getting other ideas. And some of these people are, you know, you know, you look at Jeffrey uh, is obviously very, um, purposeful with his things. He's using Descript and Overdub and J-Man's very much into the technology things. And so when someone like me, who's doing it simpler, I sometimes need those more complicated things and I need help with things that aren't working right. And I go hang out with them and they're much more techie with those things. They have suggestions. We talk about marketing it, how to get more followers. It's just great to have that networking with other people when you're involved in something. Yeah. I, I think that's such a great point because that's one, you know, Facebook really in the last few years, they've pushed people to go to groups and there's huge value there 
whatever you're doing, there's a group out there. And yes. I just posted the group for the podcasters. I'm like, wow, yeah, thank just, you. just scanning it quickly. I'm like, there's a lot of good stuff because there's always somebody better than you that's willing to give back. And, and yeah. that's what, that's what I love. And if you have a problem and, and I, when I just discovered Ecamm in the beginning, there was an Ecamm live community. I'm like, yo, I had an echo today and this didn't work and it was awful. And somebody just goes here, change this, do that. You're done. I'm like, thank you. Thank, thank you. So much. you. Quick yeah. and easy. Uh, um, so on your list, is there equipment on there as well? Or do you want to kind of quickly kind of, yeah, I'll mention equipment. Yeah. The equipment